good morning all of you nice to see you all of you in 2022 for the bsx and thank you cii for organizing this physically its seventh edition is now starting and i am very happy and honored to declare it open <clears throat> on the dais we have dignitaries and girls who are joined and thank you all of you for joining this session of inaugural session though it's a little bit late maybe we'll run out of time so i won't like to speak quite a bit but it's very important uh, to speak about those people who made cia and all others who made this bsx 2022 possible its seventh edition possible especially cia for the hard work in organizing all the people around the globe to come here and then be part of it i also know that the it's, it's co-hosted by nsil in space and isro though i am part of it still i would like to express my gratitude to each one of them for their hard work and organizing skills for this we also have this time the foreign partner participation is quite high which is very very encouraging especially the countries who are there with us for partnering and also being the focus country and also as the guest country it's really the good you know names that you are given for each of them but then they are part of us and all others who are joined with us in the ex ex exhibition and other activities and discussions in the coming two days my greetings to all of them for joining us in bsx it really makes bsx a truly international event thank you so much for that i know today in the in the audience there are people from industries the policy makers are there space tech people are there from isro and others the business community the startups the service sector providers especially in the space sector the supply chain people who are then supporting us in building the space ecosystem and also the investors and all of them really contribute to this sector and my greetings to each one of you this year is the 75th anniversary of our independence and the next 25 years is declared as the amrit kal by our honorable prime minister and he has set a great vision by 2047 who how we should be in different sectors in this country and the discussions are still going on i think a real road map for vision 2047 i am sure it will be soon coming out by the honorable prime minister's initiative and in space sector as well and he is very cautious and very careful in charting out the vision not now at least two years back while he announced spearheaded the announcement of the opening of the space sector and i believe he was seeing the changes happening and he triggered the whole movement of opening up the space sector and it is named like that opening up the space sector but it really means enabling the entire space ecosystem to grow to a much larger scale in the scale of economy for this the structures are in place now i am really happy that in space has now really fully operational and uh, dr goenga though he moved from automotive sector to space and now he is co very competent to speak about kuka etc so i believe that he really understood the whole sector well and then he has laid down the road map of those six actionable areas i am really happy that he has put it very very correctly today we also have the nsil who is which is mandated to build the space business ecosystem production ecosystem operational ecosystem of space sector in india especially coming out of this row folds and take on further in enhancing and providing more job to both isro as well as to the private ecosystem in terms of providing services provide building rockets and satellites and more applications in this domain of course this is just starting i think there is a long way to go for nsil for creating the the type of uh, the vision that is laid in front of them the most exciting part of the space ecosystem today are the startups i think all of you are aware and we are talking so much about it the hundreds of startups that are there and at least 10 of them very very seriously working on systems and also showing promises of great success 
I can still say they are promises. And make, to make it success, I think there is a long way to go, like building a space ecosystem and making a successful space entrepreneur or industry is, is, is a quite tough one. I think all of you know why it is so. It is primarily because of the risks that are associated with the space sector, be it building the rocket or satellites, or also providing applications with the risk levels coming down with each of those three areas. But then I am very happy to see that people are in the high-risk domain of building rockets as well, and they are attracting a lot of attention, getting investments, and making great progress at fast, much faster rate than I ever expected. I think I have been moving around the country and then looking at each of them. I had the privilege of visiting many of those startups in their work sports and really understood how much enthusiasm exists in those young boys and girls who are building rockets in India in small containers and sh shops across the country and really wonderful to see and it also reminds us of our younger age when we were building similar systems for PSLV. <laughs> Today, the new approaches in front of us while we reform the space sector are really interesting. And it's also equally perplexing for people like me in the space sector, though we have been serving here for many years. Uh, to make this change possible, we need to first set right our minds and our uh, psychology a little bit uh, different to enable these changes to happen. But for youngsters, it is much more easier. The first and foremost is that we have to believe that it is possible for make building rockets in private companies in India is really possible. And this, it, it will come out of the knowledge transfer that has to happen from the trained manpower available in ISRO to the industry. Of course, industry has the capability to build complex machineries, and they have done already. They built warships, they built you know, submarines, and they built uh, howitzer guns and all sort of things in, in defense sector, missiles building rockets and then making it operate operational is another challenge and we need skilled manpower for working in for quite long time in the system to understand the uh, the minor smaller aspect of it it's also important to to innovate on of uh, on this for example look at the satellites we have been building big satellites but to build smaller satellites is is a big challenge providing the similar type of capability when I visited many of those startups who are into the business of building satellites, I really amazed to see the type of developments they do. The electronics is much more compact. The ideas of doing image processing are really different than what ISRO is talking about. Uh, the applications they are coming, you know, ch chalking out are far different than anybody in ISRO ever thought about. And I want to tell you, the outside is much brighter than what was inside in Israel. I think this is a very happy thing to see. And it's also an occasion to believe that it is possible for young people in startups to make a difference. I think I am very much convinced about it. Though I am the head of the ISRO, I am equally the head of the Department of Space who has a mandate to enable this change to happen. So <laughs> from that point of view, I take all of them to my fold and say, hi guys, you are really doing it great. I think you need to continue work on it, and I'm, we are there to help you to build those wonderful systems and then make it operational, make it a real business proposition. It's also equally important that the Department of Space is uh, no, mandated to empower NSIL. NSIL has been slowly growing in various domains, as already Radhakrishnan mentioned. Uh, Ten of our operational satellites have been now transferred to NSIL as an asset. So they are free to operate it, commercially exploit it, and more will move over to them from ISRO's fold as an operational system, so I am very sure about it. They are also taken over the PSLV production now, the five of the PSLVs, but the five is only a notional number, and I want to tell you they are free to build as many they want. And if they find a commercial opportunity to build PSLV with the five building and proving, I think they will be free to build many more and then operate it also innovate on it, bring down the cost of it, and then make it a commercial entity. And we also would like to see the SSLV, though the first launch was a near miss. I am very ho hopeful that the next launch will be successful and the, next, the one after that. And we would like to see the further launches of SSLV takes place under the uh, guardship of NSIL and also happening through an industry participation consortium. The most important thing is it's not to operate the current produced 
you know, operational launch vehicles, but more, most important is can we ever do a new rocket for uh, India in the, through uh, industry, NSIL, and the startups partnership? This is the big question, and we, we are asking that question every day to industries, also to NSIL, and I would like to see this taking shape in the next few months into a pro business proposition, and we would like to see such a rocket, a rocket which will be competitive enough, a rocket that will be cost uh, conscious, it will be production friendly, which can be built in India and operated globally for the services of the space sector. And this should happen in the next few years, and then so that we can retire those already operating sat uh, launch vehicles at appropriate time. It's a very important vision that we have. We also like to see satellites built in India from our own startups, but also st satellites which are coming to the Indian shores to be built in numbers for the global customers. And we also have an idea that we should, ISRO or the government of India should become the anchor customer for some of those satellites which are going to be built. For example, if somebody want to build and, and create the type of confidence in investors and the market, then of course I believe that the government has to be an anchor customer in at least in some of those cases. I think it is an idea which is well liked by the government and I am hopeful that it will really happen and it will also encourage more and more satellites to be built in India, especially on the high-tech domain. I believe the, the business sector in space is really uh, going to grow in the application side. And it's not in building rockets and satellites that money is. The money is really in the, in the sector where the applications are. But they are connected in a way. Uh, the, the, grow, the bigger the application, the better satellites are to be built and they have to be launched. As we see now, the miniaturization of satellites allowed numbers of, number of satellites to be launched in one go. And it actually lowered the cost of providing access to space and this allowed number of more more and more number of rockets to be launched it's a chain reaction i think this chain reaction has really happened only in last few years when ideas of global communication in leo mio sectors as well as you know, larger constellation of earth observation satellites providing very competitive services as used to be provided by bigger high resolution satellites i think the whole games has changed now and this is a time of building thousands of satellites and launching them it also gives newer market uh, opportunities and business opportunities for sectors like uh, the issues of uh, large number of satellites, the debris, and the observational capability that you have to build in, uh, sometimes uh, handling debris in space, you know, making the space cleaner and sustainable, uh, issues like uh, close proximity analysis and services which are required of that nature, sometimes looking at servicing and fueling a satellite in orbit. Uh, all those business opportunities come out of this increased number of satellites that are in orbit. The whole business of space sector is not limited to what is there in space, but it is also in ground. The satellites which are there has to provide ultimately the services to the user. It requires a huge amount of ground infrastructure and equipments that are required to be manufactured, designed to suit and service for every new satellites that are going to go. And traditionally, this industry has not been growing in India, and it is very important that we, while we look at the space sector, we also look at the elements of those components of space sector that are built for the, in the ground. And the huge amount of money and business which are required to be, you know, are, are part of this uh, business is to be well understood. I think this, this also requires industries of that uh, type to come to India and then build equipments which are required for satellite communication, which is again emerging, the 5G sector is coming and then it also requires a lot of indigenous effort in building uh, equipments of this nature. And India, with the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, the 5G drive is actually going very well and I'm very happy to note that within India itself, the research and development in this sector is growing in institutions and research establishments and industries are building, started building the ground equipments for providing services. It's really a great thing to happen. So I don't want to continue now, but the most important part is that space sector is an integral part of the digital economy of this country. It's going to be in various ways, in communication, in earth observation, in PNT services, all of them become part of the space sector and they are getting fused now and the services that are going to be provided are going to be an amalgamation of all of this. I think this must be well understood by the community which is working in not only in space sector, but sectors connected to them as well. 
So I'm very happy to see that the BSX is, is happening today, and the next three days there will be deliberations, discussions leading to each of these domains, and the connect that is required to be established between uh, all the actors here, the government, the, the PSUs, the public uh, you know, sectors, the industries in the private, the startups, and the academia who are going to be part of it in the, in the long term. I believe the roadmap that was described by Pawan Goenga is one of the best that I have ever heard, and I would like to compliment him from clearly coming out with a thought process from a sector which is different from space sector. I think this is what is a change needed. The space is not meant for only those space people, but for all. I think space for all has been the motto of uh, International Astronautical Federation, and it's, it's becoming the same for each one of us in India as well. I think let us all work together to make the space sector in India really uh, you know, become really big, and all those steps which are required to be taken will definitely be taken in our capacity in Department of Space and ISRO. Thank you so much for the support and uh, your encouragement for all of us to continue work in this sector, which is very exciting and, uh, and really challenging for each of us daily, on a daily basis. Then thank you, wish you all the very best, and, and, and a great day today and for two more days of conferencing. Thank you.